Good morning, everybody. Uh, this episode of On Texas Football Saturday Conversation is brought to you by the folks at My Bookie. Make sure you're in the game with My Bookie. Pick any matchup, hundreds of college player props, and more. MyBookie.ag. All right, guys, Longhorns. Uh, they've got a big one coming up right now, guys. Uh, with uh, it, I will have to say this. I say big one. It's bigger probably because Arch Manning has been named the starter. Uh, that's you know, we, we talked about this. Um, one of the things that's really interesting to me, uh, this is probably the most awaited debut of a Texas quarterback that I can ever recall. Can you guys remember – that's a good. Texas quarterback, even Vince Young, even Chris Sims. Rod, you were there for that personally mm -hmm. on the field. Even those were not as big mm -hmm. as Arch Manning because although people, Texas fans, were waiting for Vince Young and waiting for Chris Sims, mm -hmm. the whole country is waiting for Arch Manning's debut. Uh, Arch Arch has got uh, a lot of a lot mm -hmm. of weight on his shoulders, a lot of expectations. Uh, the the uh, Louisiana man Monroe, Monroe uh, defensive coordinator even went out there and talked a little uh, a little smack on that. Rod, I'll, I'll start with you. What do you think about this game and the Longhorns' chances? I uh, love your point though about uh, Arch and the most anticipated start for a Texas quarterback ever. You're right. I mean, Texas there's a lot of hype for Sims. I was here for that, but nothing like we have now because of social media and the Manning brand, the first family of football. Hell, even James Street back in the day, people were excited about that. Wasn't he like the number one quarterback in the country at the time? I don't think it was anything like we're seeing now. So I agree with you there. And I, I think, you know, for, for Texas in this game, they just, I think Texas just wants to see Arch go out there and, and execute at a really high level. This isn't what you saw in the UTSA game, just an extension of that. I mean, he scored five touchdowns in 29 plays. So what I love about Arch is that, it, listen, for a guy that's a Manning, and one of the, he was one of the top recruits, obviously, in, in modern recruiting history. It's you, it's really tough usually to to really meet those expectations or even exceed them. That's just really tough for anybody. And I would say that that UTSA performance, he actually exceeded expectations or met them or exceeded them, depending on what they are. That's really tough to do. So I know Logan fans have really high expectations for him now. Uh, especially going up against ULM, I think he actually will meet those expectations. I think uh, I think he's going to have a spectacular performance versus ULM. And I think they'll still score, you know, somewhere in the high forties, maybe even in the fifties with Arch Manning as a starting quarterback. Ooh, that's going to be a, a good one, uh, CJ. You weren't around for Chris Sims, or but you were around for Quinn Ewers. Pretty pretty exciting debut for him as well. I didn't even mention him on that list, and uh, he belongs. Uh, CJ, what do you what do you think uh, we're going to see from uh, Arch Manning? How do you think maybe Steve Sarkeesian might use him uh, in this game uh, compared to what maybe he might do with Quinn Ewers? What what's the difference between the two? Yeah, I think to start the game, it'll be really interesting to see if Arch Manning is used and that passing game is used in the same. Uh, kind of way that we've seen it with Quinn Ewers, right? It was just a week ago against UTSA in which we saw Texas throw the football 16 out of its first 20 plays, right? That's a pretty significant bunch. And I know that Texas is still dealing with some dinged up running backs, right? Jaden Blue, Trey Wisner, it sounds like they're going to be game time decisions. And of those decisions, how much do we actually see them on the field tonight? I think that'll be a, a pretty interesting point. But to that point, I think you have to keep your running backs healthy and you have to use your quarterback in his arm to do that. So I do think you see him throw the football often. I think you see that pocket moved pretty often. You allow the legs to get involved. Uh, I don't know how many designed runs you'll have. Uh, of course, Sarkeesian didn't shy away from it uh, last week. But again, you have to think about it. You're now one play away from being down to your third string true freshman. So. I would imagine you'd like to see him protected behind that offensive line, maybe rolled out to a spot where there's nobody that in his direct vicinity. At the end of the day, I, I think the explosive plays will be there, and I think you'll see him take some shots down the field. I'm excited to see what his follow-up will be. And to your point, Bobby, it's not only a big opportunity for, for Arch to come out and show what he can do, big opportunity for Texas in terms of big marketing for the future of Texas football with a Manning at the helm, but also – for folks in College Station and Norman and other places in the SEC to say, oh, OK, this kid's legit. I was wrong about my blind evaluation of this kid as a five star because he had the last name Manning. I think that's going to be a, 
a big opportunity for for folks to eat crow on that one. Yeah, there's a guy that I actually I think I hired like 20 years ago. He called him Arch Smith. If his name was Arch Smith, he'd only be a three star. Hmm. Yeah, I, I <laughs> may have made a mistake on that hire. I'll just put it that way based on on, on what I've seen. Uh, but you know, everybody has their own opinions. Some just happen to be wrong. All right, uh, let's talk about the actual score of this game. What y'all think it'll end up being? Uh, I'll go first. I'm going 42 to six in this mm. uh, this one. Uh, the the spread is 44 and a half on game day here. Uh, Longhorns, I think the over is somewhere in the low 50s. Uh, I'm going 42 to six. I think Texas scores and scores a lot, but I mean, look, Louisiana Monroe's not a passing team. They're yeah. going to do what they can to squeeze the clock. I mean, what they've they've attempted like 30 total passes the entire year, um, and so they're going to run clock. We'll see if they're successful doing so. Uh, but that that's where I'm going. Uh, CJ, I'm going to let you go next, and Rod, you finish this up. Yeah, I have 52 to six, so very much the same. I, I do think Texas is able to score 50 again. Uh, what's interesting, you know, we talk about it in the sense that they love to run the football, right? 75% of their plays so far this year have been on the ground. Well, they also don't necessarily – take up a lot of clock. And I think that's interesting. You know, they, I know that they've played Jackson state and they've played UAB, but in that same breath, you have a team that runs the football a lot, but doesn't necessarily own the time of possession, allowing teams like Texas, who if you give them 30 minutes of clock, they're going to find ways to put up a lot of points. And I do think that Texas run defense will be tested. And it was a big point of emphasis to have gap integrity uh, in this week of practice after the bus last week. So they won't have a lot of time on the field. And when they do, I don't think they're moving the ball all that much. With that said, Texas gets 15, 16 possessions and they score on a lot of them. 52 to six, punch it in, Bobby. All right. Uh, Rod B, you're up next. Uh, last week you took one point away from CJ. What are you going to do this week? I, I'm at, I'm at 42 to six CJ at 52 to six. What's what, what are you at Rod Babers? Uh, I'll say Texas gets to gets another shutout. Number one. So I'll, I'll go with Ooh. a shutout by the defense. Uh, Because I'm ULM, I think once Texas takes away the run game, I don't see them be able to throw the football downfield. They're somewhat vertically challenged in that regard. They throw a lot of passes at or behind the line of scrimmage. Um, So I'll go the goose egg and I'll go with, oh man, Um, how about, I know I want to go big, but then (laughs) the drop off when they don't have Arch in there. And I love Trey Owens, but I just don't, not sure how that's going to go. So I'll go with, 50, I'll go with a 53. Yeah, 53. How about a 53? 53 to nothing. Yeah. Wow. Rod B. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're, gonna, they're not only going to cover the score, they're going to cover the over just by themselves, is what you're saying. It's like, that's a Colorado State ish score. Right. Yeah, Colorado State could beat ULM, couldn't they? Don't we think so? Maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, I, Look, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into the transitive property. I just think they're probably two bad teams. Yeah, uh, we'll true. see if that's exactly what uh, shakes out or not. Uh, ULM at least two and zero heading into this contest. Uh, Colorado State has not been uh, good since leaving Austin. Uh, lost last week to Colorado, although it is a more competitive game than what they had against the Longhorns. All right. Uh, before we go forward, we're going to talk a little bit about all the SEC. Not all the SEC games. But a few SEC games of note and of importance to the Longhorns. I want to say thank you uh, to my bookie. Uh, this next segment is brought to you by my bookie. With all the excitement of this season, make sure you're in the game with my bookie. Bet any matchup, hundreds of college player props, and take advantage of weekly risk free bet- bets. The best part is you can do it all anytime, anywhere, straight from your phone. Visit mybookie.ag and use promo code. On Texas to get started. It's my bookie's 10th year anniversary, and they're rolling out the red carpet for betters. Bet big and bet confident with risk free Thursdays as well. If your boosted bet doesn't hit, you'll get your money back. Weekly no sweat, win win bets all season long. And sign up now using On Texas to cash in on a double deposit bonus. It's a no brainer. Double the cash in your account before you even place your first bet. But do not wait on it because it's only available for a limited time. Uh, my bookie for those of you guys that have been playing with them they've also got something for you too a brand new loyalty rewards pl- program in my bookie plus it's simple 
The more you play, the more you earn. And as you progress through the tiers, unlock exclusive promotions, epic giveaways, and cash in your bank account. All right, guys, uh, the first game, SEC game of the week, is Florida going to Mississippi State. Two teams that Texas plays, CJ and Rod, uh, later this year. Mississippi State, of course, is next week. Uh, they got boat raced by Toledo last week, by the way, Mississippi State did. Uh, Florida, of course, hosted the Aggies, and it feels like the Billy Napier farewell tour. Mm -hmm. If Mississippi State somehow beats Florida this weekend, I don't think – I think that Billy Napier's fired on the tarmac. Florida is favored by six, guys, favored by six uh, going into Mississippi State. Uh, I, I don't know which way to go. I think Florida has more firepower than Mississippi State. Actually, I know they do. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things about Mississippi State right now. I think they they lack firepower, but I don't trust Billy Napier for and, and what that team is going through right now. After watching what they did against A and M, it just one step forward, one step back. I mean, they they start getting back in the game, then Graham Mertz throws a pick six. I mean, what what are y'all's thoughts on Florida versus Mississippi State? It's going to be interesting. Can they move the ball? Can Florida move the ball? Because that was the big issue with Mississippi State against Toledo, who got clowned at home a week ago, right? You would expect Florida to move the ball, and I think they will, especially if they throw Lagway in there. But they're up without their number one wide receiver, Eugene Wilson, who had sur surgery on his meniscus earlier this week. So uh, not only is he out for this upcoming week and the weeks beyond, but now he's in jeopardy for even playing Texas later this year. He's their number one guy, 180 yards after the catch already this year. Without him, you have Elijah Badger. You got Arlos Boardingham, the tight end. But I don't know, Bobby. I don't know where the big plays come from. Is it the run game? Is it Montreal Johnson? Do you see DJ Lagway start to really take over? I think it has to be him. I think Florida wins this game. Six points. They should cover that game off of name and talent alone. But I don't know if Billy Napier's got it in him. The one thing I do know is things aren't great. And start Vegas right now. You just got mm -hmm. clowned at home again by Toledo. You don't have much continuity on staff. You don't have much continuity in that locker room from a year ago. What are you fighting for right now? Uh, I think Florida wins. Uh, you're fighting for a new coach and trying to turn things around with Jeff Levy. It, theoretically, I'm not. I'm yeah, not yeah. saying that's what's actually happening. But theoretically, if you're a Mississippi State fan, that's what you're hoping for. You, uh, you would like them to show some fight against Toledo if that's the case. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> at home, too. At Toledo home. Hey, Rod, what, what do you think, uh, Florida, Mississippi State, before we get into Tennessee and OU next, which I know yeah. everybody's waiting on? <laughs> uh, Mississippi State, at least the passing game looked a little bit better versus Toledo. I do believe Blake Shapin, uh, what do you have, over 300 yards passing? They, they have a problem stopping the run, which they did, even though the rush defense looked a little bit better uh, in their last win. They've had, you know, uh, some problems stopping the run for, for Mississippi State, too. So I wonder if you can run the ball on them. You just brought up uh, the Florida running back, uh, maybe Montreal Johnson. Maybe he can run the run the rock on them. I think you got to play Lagway. I think Lagway's got to be your guy if you're Florida. You need somebody that can create offense all in themselves and be kind of your, your catalyst on offense and he can be that guy. You don't necessarily need a lot of playmakers around him. He can go make you plays, uh, make something out of nothing. I'll go with Florida here just because man, Mississippi state things look bleak uh, down there in Starkville. If Blake Shapin can pick up where he left off versus Toledo and he did have one, I think he had one turnover in that game. So taking care of the football a little bit more, they got to give him uh, some support with a running game. Um, and I don't know if they're going to have that yet. And I worry about the old line for Mississippi State. So I'll go Florida just because they got better athletes. But, man, you're talking about two desperation, desperate programs right now. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're wounded animals is what they are, uh, yeah. both of them, you know. Uh, so, look, I, I think Florida's got the better talent. I do think they have the defensive front to make Mississippi State one-dimensional. And that's when Jeff Levy's types of offenses, if you're able to make them one-dimensional, really, really have problems. Really, really have problems. So, all right, uh, I'm going with Florida as well. All right, this is the game of the uh, week, in my opinion, in the SEC. Uh, Tennessee heading to o uh, heading to Oklahoma. Josh Heupel returning to Norman. Josh Heupel, who kicked an onside kick while up 30 to nothing in the first <laughs> half. Josh Heupel, 
who has a superstar quarterback, uh, same grade as uh, uh, Arch Manning, has a number of offensive weapons, has a really good defensive front going up against an Oklahoma team that has looked less than ideal on offense. They've looked pretty good on defense, less than ideal on offense. Mm. I think they still lead the, the nation right now, by the way, in takeaways, Oklahoma does. Uh, but here, here's the funny thing. Uh, this game isn't until 6.30 uh, tonight uh, on ABC. It's the primetime game. Um, the, the, the line is seven in favor of Tennessee. I think that the Vols, when they get rolling on offense, they can score points in bunches. Yep. If OU doesn't strike early on offense, I fear that this game could get out of out of hand in a hurry in Norman. I, I predicted on coffee and football this week, my final score prediction was 42 to 7. OU, uh, uh, Tennessee. Wow. 42 to 7. I think it's going to be Man. bad. Uh, I, I think it's going to be bad. I could be wrong. Oh, you might with with uh, Nick Anderson coming back, Andrea Anthony expected to play as well. Uh, the two wide receivers, perhaps Jackson Arnold has figured something out. Perhaps Taylor Tatum is the answer at running back for them. But man, I, I tell you what, Tennessee. I asked somebody uh, uh, on uh, Friday uh, whether or not uh, Tennessee uh, would, if Josh Heupel got there, would he try to run it up on his uh, former team? And he said, absolutely. Josh Heupel isn't Dang. saving or Kirby Smart. He's just not trying to get out of there with a W. He likes to run it up. Uh, what do you guys think of, of the Sooners versus the Volunteers? Rod, I'll let you go first, buddy. Uh, they can't let it become a shootout because I'm with you. If that's the case, Tennessee is just going to run away with this. Oh, hey, hey, hold on one second. Hey, Rod, can you move up a little bit in your camera? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Sorry. there you go. Um, Five, four, <clears throat> three, two, one. Uh, yeah, they can't let this thing become a shootout because if it does, then Tennessee's going to run away with it. The, st the stats about Tennessee's offense are just crazy. I mean, they've outscored their opponents by 63 points per game. <laughs> 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 but this is only a seven-point spread. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They're killing it. it, it it's unbelievable uh, what they're doing. And I worry, the if I'm Oklahoma, I'm worried about their offense just being able to keep up if it does become a shootout. How about these numbers? Um, the o Oklahoma ranks in three and outs. They're 122nd in three and outs. They're 110th in third downs, 117th in sacks allowed, and 116th in offensive success rates. Pro Football Focus has their offensive line graded as the worst offensive line in the Power Four right now. Uh, one of wow. the worst. It is. So I, I don't know. I, I think if they get turnovers because they're an opportunistic defense and they can turn Tennessee over. That, I think, is their only hope in this game. Other than that, if they don't force turnovers, Tennessee's going to pull away. They just don't have the offense to keep up with them right now. What about you, CJ? You you agree with that? I do. I, I have Tennessee not not winning quite as big as you, Bobby, but I have it 38-21. 38-21, uh, I think, is what I have. So, uh, again, it's the, the difference in the trenches for me. And you look at uh, Lance Hurd. I know he was questionable earlier in the week. He's expected to play in a game like this. If you – don't allow that pass rush from our Mason Thomas, you know, out of a war rate, Ethan down some of these guys on that sooner uh, front to get after Nico on the road in a hostile environment, quote unquote. I don't know how you slow down this team because it's not going to be with your run game, right? Tennessee's second most rushing yards in the entire country at 350 coming into this week. You can say all you want about the Sooners linebackers, but at some point, because of the splits, because of how wide they are offensively, there's going to be space and lanes for them to run through. And as a result, I think, you know, if you sell up, stop the run, well, Nico's a pretty solid passer, right? He's still young, but he has the arm strength to make every throw on the field. I I, I question right now if, they, if the Oklahoma offensive line can stop a Dominic Bailey, a James Pierce, an Amari Thomas. I, I don't think so right now, and as a result, I think it gets out of hand, like you said, Bobby. And to your point, I don't <laughs> I don't know if uh, Josh Heibel is going to take his foot off the gas at all. No, he's not. I mean, he just – CJ, he, he's not. He got fired <laughs> by Bob's too, unceremoniously. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, yeah. tell you, I'm here for it. But Bobby, let me, let me be I mean, here. I've been watching that game. But my, I, I may like. I'm going to be watching the Longhorn game, wondering about the OU score. 
tonight. I, let me let me be clear, Bobby. I've thrown that Tennessee minus seven already on my bookie. I <laughs> that money's down and waiting to be returned to me, so I can run to the ticket counter with the, a winner. That's what I'm waiting on right now. So run it up, Josh. Run it up. Well done there. Got that. Got a got got a shout out to our sponsor and everything. Well done, there, good Yeah, good job. Good job. Hey, good job. I got to say this. I got to add to this. There are some other games in the in the SEC this week. Um, Bowling Green going to A and M. A and M coming off the win. A and M, the Aggies favored by twenty two and a half. Uh, Marcel Reed is the quarterback for them again this week. Um, then you also have uh, UCLA going to LSU. So the Tigers are going to host the Bruins. Uh, Arkansas and Auburn, uh, the Razorbacks. That's a future Longhorn opponent going to Auburn. Auburn actually favored by two and a half. Uh, we'll talk about that one. South Carolina uh, hosts Akron. Georgia Southern. Uh, goes to Ole Miss, uh, Vanderbilt, goes to Missouri. Uh, of those games, there are two really that only concern Texas, in my opinion. The Arkansas-Auburn matchup, because Texas yeah. goes to Fayetteville eventually. So I want to talk about that. And Vanderbilt, to some degree. Uh, Vanderbilt lost to Georgia State last week uh, in a really a, a late a last-minute thriller uh, after scoring 22 points in the fourth quarter. But Missouri favored by 20 over Vandy. Let, let's hit on Arkansas going to Auburn first. Uh, Auburn favored by two and a half. But they don't have a quarterback, guys. I mean, how is Auburn favored in this game, given that we've seen Bobby Petrino is calling a pretty de decent offense in Fayetteville right now? Yeah, I have. This is the line of the week that doesn't make sense to me, which means Auburn probably wins by 20. You know, that's normally how that goes. But I, I'm looking at it from an offensive standpoint. Auburn's making the switch to Hunter Brown. He could be a, a nice, serviceable, good, talented quarterback, if you will, down the road. He's not right now, and he has, uh, to, to point out what our Jerry Hamilton has mentioned throughout the week, one of the longest throwing motions in all of the SEC right now. In the SEC, those windows are tight, and you guys know it. We know it. Fans who have watched this conference for years know it. Those windows are not very long. Uh, oh, they're not very. They're, they're not open for very long. My point is, Arkansas, seventh in the country in yards per game offensively, uh, almost 540. You know, Bobby Petrino, Sam Pittman, they got this thing rolling. Taylor Green, he is making things happen with his legs, with his arm. Uh, Andrew Armstrong is one of the top wide receivers in all of the country right now, statistically. And Jaquindon Jackson averaging over 100 yards on the ground himself. I love the pigs in this game. Give me the Razorbacks. I might take an alt line as well if my bookie offers it. But <laughs> – I love that line right now. I think they win this game handedly. You're you're talking to you're you're putting too Absolutely. much money on the table right now. <laughs> hey, hey uh, uh, Rod. In, in all seriousness, um, you know, is is Arkansas getting to be a team that Texas needs to be paying more attention to beyond the fact that they're going up to Fayetteville in a in a few weeks, in a month or so? Uh, is Arkansas maybe turning the corner a little bit here with Bobby Petrino calling plays? If Taylor Green continues to improve, yes, he's because he's the X factor, uh, the quarterback position for them. He has made some plays this year. He's still inefficient, right? I think, I think he's below 60 percent completion percentage, but he's such um, a dynamic X factor, extending plays, making plays with his leg as an X factor, plus one in the running game. Um, and Bobby Petrino loves him. I mean, that's it, that's a guy that is very compatible with Bobby Petrino's system. So I like Arkansas too, and I'm with you. I think early in early on this offseason, we did not uh, for we did not foreshadow or foresee that Arkansas would be a team that could potentially uh, put Texas on some upset alert. But when you combine the fact you got to go on the road play Arkansas, they you know hate Texas more than they love themselves. That is a rival, and you got a dual threat quarterback who can you know make something out of nothing, improvise and you know, work outside, paint outside the lines, if you will. I think, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's upset alert, but they are definitely going to present more problems to Texas than we anticipate. There's no doubt about that. And I don't think Texas has, you know, faced a quarterback yet that's going to present the problems that Taylor Green will athletically. We just haven't seen good it. Point. Yeah. Yeah, good, good. Ho hope he doesn't do too much, but uh, I think we all think that Arkansas is going to win that game. But like you said, yeah, Auburn agree. favored, to, you know, who knows, guys. Uh, that's how these things go. Vanderbilt minus twenty to to old or to Missouri. Missouri, you, know, you played it pretty close against Boston College. Cut it a little close. Missouri's offense does not look as explosive as a year ago. 
and their defense isn't quite as good. Uh, I don't think they're a top six or seven team in the country like they're ranked right now. Uh, that being said, Vanderbilt is Vanderbilt. Uh, they did have the upset win over uh, over uh, uh, Virginia Tech in the first game of the season, but they're not exactly all great shakes right now at Vandy. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Again, that game is at Mizzou. Uh, I mentioned already South Carolina hosts Akron. Uh, Georgia Southern, Southern goes to Ole Miss uh, as well. Let's move on now, if you don't mind, guys, and let's go to the national games of note uh, mm -hmm. and take, take those in uh, because there is one big one in the big house, uh, USC and Michigan. Uh, oh, that yeah. uh, right now looks like a game where uh, Sharon Moore has already told everybody what he's going to do at quarterback. I, I, I heard somebody talk about this earlier this week. Why would you tell your opponent on Monday that you're making a change at quarterback? Why don't you say that on Saturday morning and save a bullet? It, was he facing that much heat on a Monday that he had to tell his team that tell the his opponent, hey, get ready for the zone read because that's all you're going to see this week. Yep. I mean that that that's he must be point. facing yeah. undeniable pressure right now in in, uh, in Ann Arbor. Y'all, that's a great point. I didn't think about that, Bobby, but you're right because that's what Sark did, right? And we all know Arch was starting. And Sark's like, I ain't gonna let y'all know till I got to do it last minute. You found out, you'll find out on Thursday. <laughs> so so yeah. you spent all week, you know, obviously allocating resources and practice time, meeting time to both quarterbacks. And if, so I agree with you. I don't that I don't know how that benefited them at all. Actually, I don't. Yeah, it doesn't. I, it doesn't make sense. And wow. you know, it you doesn't make sense unless he's under so much pressure. Yeah. Because I mean, he's the don't forget, he's guys. Sharon Moore was the offensive coordinator, and their offense has been brutal. I mean, yeah. brutal. Um, and so he's like getting the double whammy. It's like if Sark went out and scored ten points a game, like he did against TCU. Remember, a lot of people weren't real happy two years ago with Sark or three years ago with Sark <laughs> against TCU, no. or against Iowa State the year before. Yep. Um, when you're the offensive coordinator. You get you get brutalized moving into that head coaching role. Yeah, especially when you look at the accumulation of quarterback talent on Michigan right now. And I don't know if you have an option that you feel good about, right? You know, oh, I was gonna say what talent? That's <laughs> it, I, I had an argument with a buddy, you know, earlier the uh, in the week. And you know, you have three guys on the roster right now with experience, you know, to a degree. Alex Orgy played a year ago. Now he's going to start tonight. But if this is the route that you're going, why not throw the freshman in? I mean, he was a 35th overall player in the country a year ago. Yeah. I know that he's a freshman, but you have nothing right now that puts any fear at any level with these options. Jack Tuttle's not going to do it. We saw it for years at Indiana. Well, Davis Warren, we know what he can do. If the legs in the, the ground game do not come to life, as we probably expected Michigan to have at some point this year, I don't know what you do. And if you find a solution, that's great. If not, then you're looking at maybe a 7-5 team. Mm. I think that's the reality of it. I, I think they could be looking. Look, USC's off to a really good start. Tremendous uh, defensively. Good, good, good much defense. improved defensively with the yep. Anthony Lynn. Uh, but they also have uh, Miller Moss, the quarterback, pretty good. They're only favored, though, by five and a half. Uh, this game's going to be on CBS later today. Uh, make sure you check it out. I think it's a 2.30 kick. Uh, that's one that I'll be watching. Uh, like you guys sound, I are we all kind of taking USC going away in that game? Is that, what, is that what I hear? Yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. Okay, yeah. all right. I, I'm, I'm the same with you guys. Uh, all right, look, we've got a, a couple other games. I wanted to mention UCLA, U, LSU. Now, I know that's a SEC game, but I left it for here because it's a it's an intersectional rivalry. Or not rivalry, intersectional contest. It's not really an LSU. Won't won't count towards the SEC um, schedule or anything like that, or conference rankings. Uh, but LSU, they got kind of lucky last week. Now they made their own luck against South Carolina. Um, but you know, I it, do y'all think LSU is is getting any answers on defense right now? That's more my piece. Now, UCLA with Deshaun Foster as the head coach, he's he's hurting right now. Their mm -hmm. LSU is favored by 23. Whoa. Okay. Um, Whoa. True story. 
Deshaun Foster out of Tustin, California, almost ended up a Texas Longhorn, C.J. Vogel, uh, oh, wow. way back in the day. Uh, but my point being here is LSU favored by 23. Is LSU getting anything figured out on defense? Is their offense anywhere close to as explosive as it was a year ago? Those are the things that I question right now with them. Yeah, it's, you know, it's early still. You know, yeah. you replace a Heisman, you replace two first round wide receivers. You'd like to see them figure things out. And I think to an extent they did, right? You come back from 17 nothing on the road in South Carolina. I have to tip my cap. That's an impressive comeback from behind victory there on the road in the SEC. Does that happen if Lenore Seller stays healthy? I would say no. So there's the luck involved. And you could probably make the argument the pick six with the block in the back or whatever it was played into it as well. I don't think LSU is a team that's going to compete for the SEC title. I don't think LSU is a team that really has a higher ceiling than eight and four this year when you start getting into some of the tougher games this year. With that said, they should win this game pretty easily. You know, I, I don't have a lot of faith in the UCLA offense. I know uh, if there's one thing to, to quote, you know, uh, Sean Foster from his, uh, from his introductory Big Ten press conferences, <laughs> The only thing I know about UCLA is it's in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. If you go back and you watch that, that's the one thing you know. But, no, Ethan Garbers, I, I don't have a lot of faith in him. There's still enough talent defensively for LSU for, for life to be tough for him. Big picture-wise in the in the SEC, they're, they're a non-factor basically for me. Rod, yeah. where are you at on LSU, this LSU team right now? Because Texas doesn't play them. Mm -mm. I haven't watched them close. I do think they found something at running back with Caden Durham. Uh, yes. Freshman out of Duncanville, but uh, anything for you on LSU that people need to keep in mind this year as we watch yeah. them go forward. Not just I think I, I think CJ hit the nail in the head. With some of the broad strokes, right? The macro about the losses they've had on offense. So it's, it may take them a little while to find their identity offensively. And I'm not sure about defense. They allowed they allowed two 65 plus yard runs, <laughs> touchdown runs last week. Like that, that is not improving on defense. Now, Texas allowed a big, a long run too. Uh, they allowed two touchdown runs of 60, 60 plus yards. They had a, a touch, they started an interception, basically a touchdown kind of taken away because of interception in the red zone. Uh, they had a block punt as well. Um, they had a failed fourth and goal play where they were down in the red zone on the goal line and still couldn't get it in. They have been, they were their own worst enemy. Uh, last week against South Carolina. So if they cut out a lot of the self-inflicted wounds and they're better situationally, I think even with the talent that they've lost on offense and with them really kind of re reinventing themselves on the defensive side of the ball, I think they'll still be able to win games because they're LSU and they got the, the talent disparity. Usually when they play teams, they have that advantage, but they, they got to stop beating themselves. They almost beat themselves. That's why that was an impressive win. That's why yeah. that's why uh, Brian Kelly was so excited about it, and, and, and he was telling the media, hey, guys, we just want to – that was a tough game on the road because he realized, they, like Brent Venable said, we should have lost that game. We should have lost that game. We, we should have, and they found a way to win it. They can't be their own worst enemy. They're not, they're not talented enough to be that. That's a really good point. Uh, that's, that's interesting because it's like you win a dirty game almost. You know it's what I mean? You, mm -hmm. the, the opposing team lost its starting quarterback. Uh, a TD return – interception return for a touchdown – Gets called back. Um, but, I, look, I think LSU is a year away at least uh, from really being a, a, a difficult opponent for anybody. Uh, we'll see where that goes, though. All right, a couple other games. I just want to mention these two, uh, or a couple of these. TCU, SMU, uh, the Horned Frogs Whoa. favored by three. Yes. What is that, the Iron Skillet or something? What is that yeah. called? Yeah. All right. Cal, Cal, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, goes to 0-3 Florida State. Florida State favored by two and a half. Two and a half. Why are we favored in Florida State? <laughs> Baylor, Baylor goes to Colorado. Colorado only favored by two against the Bears. Uh, that's a Big 12 matchup now. And then NC State going to Clemson. Clemson favored by 20 or, or so. Uh, those are the interesting games out there for you guys to watch later today. All right, that's going to do it for this morning's Saturday conversation. I want to say one thing real quick. We've got a bunch of stuff coming up for you. Today, uh, right now, we have uh, the Saturday conversation we just had, uh, sponsored by my bookie. We've got the Texas tailgate. Our friends at South Point and Hargrove will be out there at three to four today uh, at our tailgate uh, at the 
and, and hope you guys enjoy it. We'll be live. CJ's going to be walking around as well, uh, maybe doing a live stream from somewhere over there near DKR. We got the watch with us, hosted by Aaron Hogan, and then the post game live immediately following the game later tonight. Uh, brought to you by our friends over at Flight uh, by Yingling. Uh, guys, y'all have a good one. If you're going to the game, travel safely. Uh, and uh, if not, make sure you check out uh, what we got going on here at On Texas Football. For CJ and Rod, I'm Bobby Burton. Thanks for watching. Hope everybody has a good weekend, everybody. Hook them. Hook them. <laughs>